Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Uh, we got Steve Dixon here today, and we're going to be talking about first-time investor. Should I buy turnkey? Should I buy fix and and buy, buy rental refinance the burr? What should we do? So this is what we're talking to do today, guys. If you like this, like and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell, and always comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought and any ideas for future videos. So welcome, Steve. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for having me on. I thought uh, this would be a good starting point for some questions I had around uh, the Burr method, uh, comparing that to potential investment properties that are already tenanted, um, and you know, just kind of diving deep with you and understanding what that looks like and providing clarity for myself and future clients that I work with as well. 100% for sure. Yeah, obviously Steve's a, a real estate agent in the Burlington Hamilton area. Um, and, you know, he helps residential and he, again, we're just gaining knowledge here, right? Perfect. All right. So, all right. So shoot, what's, what, what questions do you have? Like where, like, I know you watch the videos. I know you watch at least the Burr video and, and the, run, um, the run the numbers videos. And yeah. yeah, did you, I mean, obviously we ran the numbers on a St. Catharines Burr. So, right. yeah, I, I mean, so where, where are you at? Like, what, do you, what are you thinking? Like, what have you done so far? Where, where are we in the process? Yeah, I'd say right now, Mark, I'm kind of just comparing and contrasting between, you know, like I was saying, so tentative properties um, where tenants are already in, like a multifamily unit, for example, uh, you know, running those numbers with a spreadsheet that I have uh looking at income gross income coming in looking at the expenses and what the net operating income kind of looks like and just you know having a view at the cap rate and what kind of objectives that i'm trying to obtain like I, i'd like to pick up a property for example i can you know buy it hold it that sort of thing but i hadn't really dove too deep with the whole should i renovate something uh or just pick up something that's more turnkey and, and run with it and i guess maybe it ties into my objectives perhaps yeah, I mean, what's your goal really at the end of the day? Uh, my goal is to pick up investment property and build future family wealth uh, down the line that serves me uh, as I get older. Okay. Um, how many properties are, are you thinking? Are you thinking one or two, three? I, I, I'm leaning towards 20? duplex, triplex to start, and maybe you might change my thinking on that, but that's where my head's at right now. Well, I mean, I tell everybody from two to four units is where you maximize your return. Okay. So, uh, number one, like you're, you're looking in the right area yet. Like uh, how many do you like, are you going to self manage? Number one, are you, um, uh, like how many of these do you want? How many triplexes do you want? Do like four plexes do you want? Like what, what's the goal at the end of the day? I would say the goal like over the next couple of years would be maybe I don't know, six to 10 units, like. Okay. So, I mean, if you added one triplex a year for the next three years. Yeah. That, that would be okay. Or. That'd be awesome. Or, you know, one, one duplex a year for four years, five years, every, well, one for every five years. Yeah. And then you have 10 units and yeah, I mean that in, in Hamilton, that would, at this point, that's $3 million in real estate. Right. That's not, not a bad portfolio. If you just did nothing else and you just paid off the mortgage, you'd have $3 million sitting there. Yeah, I'd be okay yeah. with that. That'd be a good goal to work towards. And I think for me, it's just about um, increasing the breadth of uh, Oh, you're, you're cutting out there. Family. So that, that's where my interest lies. Can you hear me right. okay? No, you got you to gotta go back and repeat that because we missed it. Well, my, <laughs> apparently, my internet connection's unstable. It, it, it's just, you or just, me, one, it, one of the two. Well, it, it just told me my internet is unstable. It's, you know, it's, it's, like the, it's like the person, a little unstable. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I think for me and the family market, just like I said, it's just about um, growing our portfolio over time, learning more and digging deeper into the investment property side of things, and... Um, I, I, I like the idea of the multifamily option and just, you know, do I want to go through the conversion portion of that and convert it or do I buy something that's already legal duplex or triplex and, 
and run with that. And I just wanted to understand it at, at a higher level, the pros and cons of that. All right. So, I, oh, I mean, let's, let's first talk money. Like, what kind of cash are we working with here? Mm, I'd probably say about... Seventy-five to one hundred fifty thousand. Well, that's a big gap. Is it seventy-five or yeah. one hundred and fifty? So I don't. Let, let's let's say like probably about one hundred and fifty. Okay. Yeah. Is that coming off a line of credit? Uh, likely cash. Cash. Okay. Perfect. Easier. I mean, now because they changed the rules around lines of credit, so that's why I asked because you would have had to do something different, which is, okay. you can still use it. Okay. So okay. let's talk one hundred fifty grand. Um, I mean, what have you looked at so far? Like down, like, are you looking downtown? Like what kind of pricing are you looking at? I'm sure you've looked at some stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Downtown, like kind of, you know, four, four fifty to 600 K kind of in that range, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get something like this is how I started. I never was doing, I, like I've never done a conversion. I mean, I've renovated tons of stuff. I've added, well, maybe I've added a couple of units to places, but I just buy existing and I've just, as tenants leave, turned them over. Okay. Right. And added value and well, added value. I just made them nicer, got higher rents, which added value obviously, because the more rent you get, the more it's worth. Right. Um, which is super simple from a, obviously from, I, I get cash flow from day one. Um, I don't have to, I just run it. And then somebody leaves, I go renovate the unit. Right. Um, right. So, I mean, the difference that like you can buy a legal duplex now that maybe is a bit run down and then over time fix it right? And add value that right. way rather than going through the whole conversion process. Cause now if you go through the conversion process, well, I mean, you're three to six months, depending on how, what, where, and why, um, yeah. like your renovation costs are going to be probably in the hundred thousand dollar range, 80 to a hundred thousand so. dollar range. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, everybody's getting them done. Now you'd use one of the two or three or four guys who are, you know, um, basically cookie cuttering it so it'd be fine yet okay. i mean it'd be a lot more expensive like you're 20 percent down then you'd have an extra hundred thousand dollars on top so now the thing it comes down to though is in a year when you're going to look at another property are we saving that money again to buy or do we need this property to be worth so much so we can go buy the next property right yeah valid question I'd say I want to expand and pick up more units in the future. So, well, I understand that yet. So the next time we're buying a property, where's that money going to come from? Does it need to come from like the existing portfolio? Is that basically, cause that's what a, a burr will do, right? A burr will right. Um, fund the next property or at least a portion of it. Because of the refinancing component, right? Because of the refinancing component. Okay. Okay. So you can buy something that maybe is not going to give you a, maybe you're buying something at 500, you're putting 40 in and now you're worth 600. So you can get some money out. And as long right. as you're saving enough, I mean, at the end of the day, if your goal is to buy one a year, by year three, the first one's buying you the next property. Right. It just depends on how much you can save and, and that type of thing. Right. And, and to buy the next property and you can still increase value. You're just not increasing it from say 450, 500 to 650, 700. Right. Okay. So, I mean, that's really where you got to plan that out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you recommend one way or the other for seasoned investors versus people that are newer to investing? I mean, so changing use is always yeah. a great way to add value. Anytime yeah. you change use and like add. So, I mean, you take 
a cornfield and you change it to residential zoning, right? Now that's worth so much more than it, it was as a field, right? You take a single right. family, you change it into a duplex, it's worth more. So change of use, I mean, there's obviously the more complicated you get, the more value it adds, yet, you know, this, it, it does add value. So you, you kind of, I mean, it comes down to how complicated do you want to make this? You can buy, you can go buy a duplex already done, um, legal yeah. and, 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 you know, tenanted and just wait for those tenants to leave. And when they leave, you renovate the unit, put, spend 10, 20 grand, you know, clean it up, do whatever, even if you like, sometimes, you, well, I mean, sometimes you just paint and, and clean it and you're, you're increasing $500 a month. I mean, rents are still going up yeah. year over year, 8% in Hamilton. Right. Right. Okay. So sometimes it's just waiting and, and just. Where do you think the um, ideal spots are to invest right now? Like when I looked at your Burr video, you had given the example, like you mentioned earlier with regards to uh, St. Catharines. Um, you know, I, I've been looking a little bit out there, but more so in some of the Hamilton areas, uh, Corktown, Delta, that sort of thing. Like what, what do you recommend there area wise? You know what? Um, so, I mean, you get more bang for your buck out in St. Catharines while in Niagara, Brantford. Yeah. Um, so your 150 is going to go farther. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little bit higher cash flow initially. Over time, I think the better investment is downtown Hamilton. Um, yeah. I just think like the art scene and the, the, like the foodie scene and I mean, just jobs uh, in general. Yeah, um, yeah it's, at the end of the day, a lot of people are getting priced out of those markets for rental, for buying. And that's why they're going out to those other areas. Um, you know, I don't think you can go wrong in any of those areas. Okay. I think if you, I think if you buy right, I think you're going to have less lift on something like a, um, a you know, a, a property in Welland compared to St. Catharines or, you know, to, compared to Hamilton, if you then take that unit, clean it up, and you know you're gonna have less lift in rents, less less lift in value, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. Because it's kind of leaning towards downtown Hamilton, some of the areas yeah. through there. So, like, if your goal is to buy this one, you know, sit on it for two years, refinance it, and you know, save some money, go buy another one. And you know, do that again in, in, in the the next year type thing, or the two years after that, and then you know your fifth year, you have three properties, you refinance, you buy a fourth, like that's totally doable, right? Yeah. And then it it becomes either you can keep doing that and it's going to keep funding deals, or you can sit sit there and pay down the mortgage, and you know at some point you're going to have a four to five million dollar portfolio just sitting there paying you. Yeah. You know, yeah. like a lot, a lot of guys, if, if your goal isn't to own 200 units and if the goal is to own like 10 to 15 units, you buy them, you just, it's kind of set it, forget it. You take any cash flow, you're paying off a mortgage. And then once you pay one off, you pay off the next, right? Because I mean, you probably don't need the cash flow to, flow to live. Right. But it's, it's yeah. and it's future, right? Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier on the, maybe more so on the lending side, when it comes to investing in property, um, the difference of having cash or using line of credit, some of the differences would be in your eyes. I, I mean, in my eyes, there's no difference. Um, yeah. the difference on the lending side is now that you gotta, you gotta take your line, line of credit and you gotta put it into a GIC. Right. They just don't want to okay. see that your down payment is coming from the line of credit. So you just put it in a GIC for three months and say, Oh, I have a three month GIC. That's what's going to pay. They're like, Oh, right. okay. Yeah. It yeah. seems silly yet. Again, this is what we were doing five years ago and, and then we're doing it again because they think that this is every, everybody's buying houses a hundred percent down and we're all going to be screwed. And yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. 
I've heard of some people that are, you know, I, the general rule of thumb with income property is 20% down mark. Like I know some people are getting away with doing, in some cases I've heard less than 20%, like maybe you can dive a little bit deeper into that or are people doing it unethically? Like what are they? No, are they no, no, no. I mean, I mean, maybe some people are, um, yeah. yet like a lot of people are doing, um, so they'll do an 80, 75, 80% first from a B yeah. lender, a, a or B lender. Um, right. they'll, then go ahead and get um, secondary financing. So they'll pay 10 to 15 points. Okay. Um, I mean, it depends, right? If you're doing burrs and you're pretty confident and you're in and out and your numbers and you've done a bunch of these and you got some equity sitting there, then it makes sense, I guess. I mean, to me, if you don't need to, don't do it. it yeah. it's a, to be honest with you, it adds a level of stress that, I mean, I see the hair is leaving anyways. So, you know, do you need that much more stress in your life? Right. Because again, yeah, yeah. If, if, if six months, like you can't do it in six months and it turns into a year, those, those bills start to add up. Right. Sure. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. That covered my main questions, I think at this point. So is there anything else I should be thinking about or anybody for that matter when it comes to increasing their investment property portfolio? I mean, number one, I think you should just be out there looking at properties. Yeah. Um, you need you, like, you need to know the rents. Like, okay, I'm buying a dumpy unit. It's rented for a thousand dollars. I know that as, as is, I could re-rent it for 1300. If I spent, you know, $20,000, I could re-rent it for $1,600, $1,700, right? So I, yeah. I just need to know my, my metrics. And yeah, I mean, you're going to get tenant turnover. So I wouldn't worry about that. A lot of people ask me, well, how do you get people out? And I say, well, I wait them out. I mean, okay. if, if they're old or young, people change jobs, pe situations change, COVID happens, whatever happens, right? S stuff happens. And people's lives change. So I don't really worry about that. Uh, they're going to move at some point. And until that time, they sit there and pay me. And like, I've had somebody in my Toronto property for over 10 years now. Now, wow. I don't think they're ever going to leave. Yeah. Like, they got such a sweet <laughs> deal. I mean, they're paying like $1,500 for a two bedroom apartment in Toronto. So they may never leave. But again, right. I have no stress. They, they take, they shovel the walk, they take out the garbage, they fix little things or even in, even in their, um, the other unit there, like it doesn't matter to me. It's like, okay, I'm probably losing a thousand dollars a month. But, you know, I probably, if I paid them to leave, then maybe, but you know, again, it, it's easy, right? Who needs the stress for a thousand bucks a month? Yeah, for sure. How do you see uh, investor appetite out there with, uh, in a COVID world, like what are you seeing changes or whatnot? Um, you know what? There's people who are scared and yeah. I just see, I say be greedy when others are fearful. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm buying right now. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at deals. I'm, I've got the 30 unit I'm closing in July. Nice. You know, we're, re we're renovating. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. Like, I mean, I'm looking at another one that I, I think I'm probably going to buy. So I, who knows? Right. But, um, you're not getting great deals yet. I think when this is over, like things are going to pop. Yeah. So I think now is a good time to buy. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, can check out my mind. last, my last video was uh, the market update video. Well, depending on when this releases, because if we have Ian Zabo on, <laughs> if he can figure out how to work zoom, then uh, <laughs> he, he might be on tomorrow, but Steve might be on, uh, on, on tomorrow or who knows. That's hilarious. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that covered it, Mark. Like as far as a couple key questions I had, I took note of a couple things. So, uh, and the bird video was really helpful too. So just the numbers example that you gave out, that was, uh, that was good. So. Good. All right, man. Well, you know, thanks for reaching out. Um, good luck. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Right. Thanks, Steve. Cheers.